Turn off. All right. Turn the volume down. Got your Bibles? Are you comfortable? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. You may be seated. Psalm chapter 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. When I read the scriptures, I read that we have been grafted in as a nation. I believe that God loves America. How the end is, I, I don't know what's going to take place. But when we look back at our fight for independence from England in July of 1776, there was mass shootings of men, women, and even children. And they had to take a stand against the British Empire. When we think of the 4th of July, we think of fireworks and cookouts, but the real fireworks were not pretty. They were bombs bursting in an air. Amen. They, there were people that were being destroyed because of the real fireworks. They, the bombs landed near you. You were either put in a hospital or a grave. Wasn't a pretty picture at all, but liberty has a price tag. Freedom has a cost. Our freedom here in America was bought by the blood of many who fought for the principles of that freedom and were willing to pay any price to acquire it. Our spiritual freedom and liberty today also was very costly, and it still carries a price tag. Let me just tell you, you, you as a believer in Christ, you have to be careful because we always border here in this house as nationalists. We love our nation but we also are ambassadors of Christ. Amen. So we've got to love our world. Everybody follow where I'm going? Some people think that being a Christian only means you just love America. You've got to love the world. Amen. For God so loved the world. Amen. But he said, blessed is the nation whose God, amen, is the Lord. Uh, John F. Kennedy said in 1961, a month before I was born, let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival, amen, and success of liberty. Yes, I just read about a Democrat yes. president, so put that in your hat, amen. Okay, let me give a little balance here. Ronald Reagan said, I have wondered at times what the Ten Commandments would have looked like if Moses had run them through the U.S. Congress. Reagan also said, freedom is a fragile thing, and it is never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by inheritance. We must be able to fight and defend constantly, amen, for each generation. For it comes only once to a people, those who have known freedom and then lost it, have never known it again. I want you to hear that. Those who have known freedom and lost it in their lifetime never knew it again. Amen. So it's important to hold on to your freedom. The United States remains the last best hope for a mankind plagued by tyranny and deprivation. America is no stronger than its people and the means. And that means you and me. Amen. It's important we stay strong. Well, I believe in you, and I, I don't know how, about, how you feel about me, but, but I believe that if we work together, when one day we will all say we fought the good fight, we finished the race, we kept the faith. Amen. And to our children and our children's children, we can say we did all that could be done in the brief time that was given to us here on earth. Amen. Judges chapter 7, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Judges. Judges chapter 7, verse 1. Amen. Judges, that is not after Mark, please. Old Testament. The Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible. Then we have the, the people of Israel finally getting to move into the promised land, right? Remember the preaching on detours? They finally got to move into the promised land. When they got into the promised land, there were two cats that ran that thing. One was named Joshua, another was named Caleb, right? So we got the book of Joshua. After the book of Joshua, you got the book of Judges. Now, sometimes you'll read your Bible and you'll see the book Judges, and you'll think to yourself, well, that don't mean a whole lot to me. It's just the name of a book. The book of Judges has to do with 12 Judges. 
that ruled Israel. They were not kings. They were judges. What's the difference? Kings dealt with dynasty, Sam. They, they wanted to prolong in the next son and the next son and the next son and they moved on down. A judge was elected in and often these judges became warriors. Amen. So when I walked and I started looking through the judges that went through scripture, these were men that helped and women, by the way, that helped set things free. They set the nation free because you remember what they had to fight? The Philistines. They had to fight the Amorites, the Moabites, uh, all the ites. We, just, you know, we always say that you know, even the termites. They had to deal with everything over into the promised land and kick them out. So we see the judges pop up. Amen. And you'll see uh, uh, Onithino. Amen. I read his name there. I don't know exactly. It's not on the overhead. Don't look for a Cheryl. But he married Caleb's daughter. Woo, that's a brave man. To go ask Caleb, can I marry your daughter? Because Caleb was one mountain-possessing fella. Amen. There's something about him. So he married, married the daughter there, and he said, all right, go ahead. He was the first warrior judge. Then there was Ehud. Ehud had left-handed. He was left-handed dagger bearer. And you might remember there was a king of Moab by the name of Elon. Amen. And Ehud went in. The Bible says he dropped the dagger. He, he wasn't ready for this. Elon was not ready for it, but he was a, a wicked, wicked king of Moab. And he dropped the dagger out of his left hand and shoved it into the belly. And listen, the scripture says that Elon was so f plump that, that when, when he shoved the knife in, it went all the way to the hilt or to the to palm, the end of the palm of his hand. He went way up into the plumpness. We got to be politically correct without hurting people's feelings here. Amen. Shoved it way up in there and killed that man. Snuck it in. Amen. He, he, it was kind of a spout, and then he started ruling. That was, that was Ehud. Amen, the left-handed dagger bearer. Then, then, then we see Shamgar. I love Shamgar. Shamgar was a man. He hung out. Amen. And every time he got ready to get on the main road, everybody say, the road. Every time he got getting ready on the main road, the Philistines would show up and chase him off of his road, and he got tired of it. He had that Popeye spirit. I've had all I can stands, and I can't stands no more. Amen. He jumped up one day and said, I ain't going out the back door, Mama. And he grabbed his ox gold. The ox gold was a long pole with a point on the end. She said, Baby, where are you heading? He said, I'm tired of them pushing me around, honey. I'm tired of getting, getting telling me I, I can't be on this road. I'm about freedom today. Amen. And he walked out and killed 600 Philistines. And he took his road back. That's my road. Everybody said, my road. Wow. It's my nation. Everybody said, my nation. Wow. Amen. It's important to see these judges rise up the way they did. Amen. Then we see Deborah. We'll talk about Gideon in a minute. There was Tola and Jar and Jephthah, Ebsen, Elon. Amen. Samson was another judge that God had raised up. You know his story. So when I'm walking through this and I see it, Yesterday, I was with a couple of pastor friends of mine, and we are doing a podcast. And while, while we were doing it, I ha actually, I just had my message there because it's a good way for me to review what I'm preaching today. We call that cheating. <laughs> Amen. And so I, I just had it out, and I was going through it. And then it hit me as we were talking about these judges that when a nation needed a change to turn wrong back to right, God sent judges. He didn't send a king. He didn't send a president. He sent judges. And after 50 years, something was turned from wrong back to right by our judge. Matter of fact, our judges said this week, it's okay for you to pray on the football field. <laughs> Amen. Watch out for yourself. You get a couple of righteous bold judges in the right place, it'll turn this nation back around to God. Can I get an Amen. Amen. And that kind of freedom, I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, in 1973, many of us weren't even born. I was, I was a young man then. But in 1973, people forgot the hoopla, uh, not, not the hoopla, the anger and, and, and the upsetness over the conservatives who were upset over the issue of Roe v. Wade. They were upset over it. But no, everybody forgot about that. That's 50 years ago. So then they had like it's brand new when it happened right now. Hey Amen. I'm for our children's rights. It's the only way I vote. It is the only way that I vote is pro-life. I don't care if you're Democrat, Independent, Republican. I don't care. Hey Amen. I'm just got to vote for the babies. Come on. Hey Amen. That's just how I've always been, and that's the way I'll always be. And that's not true. And how could that offend you? How could that offend you? How does that offend people? How do people, singers, get on and say, don't listen to my music? If you're for uh, uh, not killing babies, why don't you tell the truth and the shame of the devil? Why don't you tell what it really is? 
Amen. So how does that fit? So here we in a nation, a place of, in Israel, that for seven years, the Midianites have come in and raided. They've taken all of their corn, all of their wheat. They, they've robbed them, their storehouses. And every time they'd gather up a crop and plant a crop and bring in the crop, here they would go in and they would, they would take it all out again. Seven years, like locusts, the Midianites would come in on the Israelites in the promised land and take their stuff. They'd take their stuff. Seven years this went on. Then we find a man down inside of a, what is called a, a, a press, a man in a hole in the ground, and he's gathered up a few sheaves. In other words, what was left over from what the enemy took? Took all the gasoline. They just a little left. You ever drank the hose on the gasoline hose? I have. I've lifted the hose and got every little bit out. I don't know if you're doing that today, but that'll get you another eighth of a mile. Amen. They, they, so he went out and gathered up the sheaves that were remaining, and he, he, he was beating them out. And, and, and an angel showed up and called him a mighty man of valor. Now, the truth is, it doesn't look that way. So when I'm reading this book, I realize that historically, the Israelites hadn't driven out all the inhabitants of the land that God had commanded. And now these enemy tribes are rising up. They're, they're outgrowing the children of Israel. Judges 21-25 says, In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did what he saw fit. It's important. When people are free to choose the path of least resistance, wrong going and wrong doing, becomes commonplace. It's the direction most choose to go. Uh, it's almost a cycle. The children of Israel would fall into sin. Again, missing the mark. Not doing the right thing. And then they'd go into servitude. They'd become slaves. And then they would cry out in supplication, God help us! And then God would rescue them. And it would happen again. They would live an abundance of life and everything's good, but then they'd fall right back into sin. They quit worshiping God, quit, go, quit doing the right things of God, quit, quit uh, acting like he was around. They would fall back into sin. Then they'd go into servitude. They'd become slaves. You say, well, I'm not a slave. I've met so many people that thought they were free that were slaves. Yeah. They were slaves to all type of addictions in their life. Amen. They were slaves to the opinions of others. Social media has it boosted that in so many people's lives. Amen. So, so it's important that this freedom, then they go to suppl supplication. In other words, prayer, asking God for forgiveness and salvation. Handle no future. Seven years came the oppressor. For seven years, just long enough for God's kids to forget the roar. Did you know God put a roar inside of you? Amen. Did you know you are... A tribe, and the leader is a lion. He's the lion of the tribe. Many times we forget, we think we're still a bunch of sheep, and we walk around and act like sheep and bat like sheep, and got to have somebody lead us like sheep. And God said we like sheep, amen, but he don't want us to stay sheep. Hallelujah. He wants us to grow up and become more like lions. And here this man Gideon had lost his roar. He had lost his passion. Amen. They were impoverished. The word poverish means brought low. They, they had no homes. They had no food. They had no belongings. They could call their own. They were waist deep in a gray slush called discouragement. I want to tell you something, church. When hope is needed, courage got to rise. When hope is needed, courage has got to rise. That's why I, I stand here and I, t I say to myself, God help. Thank you, Jesus, for our judges who rose up and said, listen, it's okay to pray to God. It's okay to save babies. Amen. It's okay to, to, uh, to for, for, you know, they even hit the EPA. I couldn't help myself. I said, God, God, let them go ahead. Go ahead. Let the dominoes fall. Amen. Let's take this thing back to 1970. Can I get an Amen. 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 So after seven years of Midianite tyranny, let me just break this down one more time because I don't, nobody, y'all, y'all hear me. We couldn't destroy this earth if we wanted to. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, everything in it. God set this thing in motion thousands of years ago and he's never backed off and it keeps reproducing with sun, with seed time and harvest. It, as long as you keep planting seed, you give it a little time, it's going to be harvest. Amen. You couldn't destroy this earth if you had to. Well, what about the hairspray? What about the emissions? What about that? Guys, whether it's emissions or batteries, we're going to have issues. But travel this world and realize what a blessing God gave us on this planet. You know how long this planet is going to last? As long as he wants it to. Amen. When he's done with Now, if you don't have, if this ain't your worldview, then you, you're going to be wishy-washy in another 10 years. 
Amen. No, 20 years, 30 years. It's all going to change because everything keeps, what I see is science keeps changing. I couldn't help myself but grin a little bit when I heard Fauci had got COVID after four shots. <laughs> I know that's wrong. I shouldn't, you shouldn't laugh either. It was, it was funny. But we've been beat down for two years. We've been told what to do for two years. We've seen tyranny for the last few years. Amen. Shouldn't have to be that way. Hallelujah. So now, now we're seeing this shift in here with this media night. And, and, and I mean, after those years, uh, the word speaks of their condition. They were discouraged. In the verse 1, chapter 7, early in the morning, Gideon and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for you to deliver Midian into their hands in order that Israel. Now, again, the scripture says Midian looked like locusts. There were so many that went in. And God says, Here, you got too many men. They, they're going to boast against me. They think that their own strength saved them. Announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 men remain. But the Lord said to Gideon, there's still too many men. Take them down to the water and I will sift them for you there. If I say this one shall go with you and they, they will go and this one shall not go with you, they shall not go. So Gideon, verse 5, took men down to the water where the Lord told them, separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog. In other words, they fall over into the water from those who kneel down and drink it from their hand. 300 men lapped with their hands to their mouths. All the rest got down on, on their knees. The Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents, but kept the 300 men who took over the provisions and the trumpets of the others. The atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding ground to miracles. When there's an expectancy in the house, when there's an expectancy in your house, when there's an expectancy anywhere you go, it's a breeding ground to miracles. That's where miracles come from. I've always said miracles come in cans, not cannots. You've got to believe God can. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, so here was a moment where he had, they had 32,000 men and now 22,000 have gone home for fear. And you've had 10,000 men go home because of a lack of discipline. You know, leadership's the capacity to influence others through inspiration. Somebody's got to inspire here. And the fact that Gideon, this... This man stayed with it. Amen. This judge, he, he believed God put him in the right place. You see, he had examples, and I love it. The Bible says the Old Testament was written for our example. So that's why I'm going back into it here to find this example for us today. Moses, to inspire the people of Israel to have the courage to abandon their painful but accustomed role of being a slave and follow him out into the desert with no civilization, no guarantee of food and water, just a vision of a land where milk and honey flow. That's leadership. To tell people, for us to tell you that when you live for God in this life and something happens and there's a heaven waiting for you and you to stay with God for 25, 30, 40, 50 years because you believe in the vision there's a kingdom to come. Hallelujah. Amen. you got to stick with the book. Can I get an amen? When God spoke to Gideon, it wasn't to his past or present, but to his destiny. He gave him a dream. Liberate the people. A passion to fuel his vision. This would take leadership. Amen. Now, again, it is influence, but it has to be inspirational. Some people think that, that uh, leadership is just influence. It's not just influence. If I had a gun and said hit the floor, I've got influence. You hear me? But that doesn't make me a leader. That would make me a dictator. You follow? Amen. So there has to be inspiration. It's got to be motivated by passion, generated by vision, produced by conviction, inside ignited by, a by purpose. There's a difference between ambition and vision. It's the test of endurance. I meet a lot of people that are ambitious. They try stuff, but they don't endure with it. When you endure, when you stay with it because it's a vision, it's in your heart, you know God told you. Amen. And you keep pressing on. So the first test here was fear. Anyone who fears is scared, may go home. Amen. Fear, afraid of rejection, afraid of being alone, failure, an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by an anticipation or awareness of danger. They were just scared. And we say this all the time. Fearless just means less fear. And there's a lot of things in life you do afraid. 
It doesn't mean that you just, you're full of, uh, you're full of, but these guys are scared. Amen. And you don't want anybody scared going to fight for you. I don't let people that are scared pray for me. I don't. I don't need that negative on my life. I mean, I'm not into voodoo and, and, and who, all that. You know, but, but if you're scared, why you won't pray for me? Come here, Pastor. I know you're fitting to, you fit to go get on the tower. Don't touch me. <laughs> Man, I don't want no transference of that on me. Amen. I want somebody bold praying over me. Hallelujah. Somebody that believes what we're doing is right. So it was strength through subtraction. I've seen this happen. I've seen it happen in the church world. Well, sometimes there were certain folk that had left, amen, and, and off from that, the, the body grew. It just got stronger. So they went from 32,000 to, to 10,000. So scared people, in fact, they, they're scary. Scary people are just scary. <laughs> Second test was discipline. So Gideon took them down. You saw what that happened. When they got down, they, some of them just, they were thirsty. Man, they fell down in the water and started sucking it up like a dog. But some of them stopped and they drank and they were aware. They realized they're going into battle. And Gideon looked around, and I know he was hoping for more, but there were only 300 men. And God said, look, that, that ought to work right there. And Gideon said, you reckon? Amen. You, you better show up on this. And Lord. You know, this is when you know. I think it was Gideon that did the fleeces. I don't have time to do that, but he threw a fleece out, and he said, if this, if this piece of wool is wet in the morning on a dry night, I know that the Lord is for me. And the Lord did it for him twice. But I would encourage you, don't fleece the Lord. Don't fleece the Lord. Don't don't. Don't drive around the donut shop and say, if I see one open spot up front, I know the Lord wants me to have a kolache. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Amen. Don't, 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 don't put the God to the test like that. Can I get an amen? Amen. So that, that's very important. So they drank with alertness and sobriety to the task that was at hand. The test revealed attitude, readiness, awareness, amen, of the enemy. Great destinies have been forfeited by lack of discipline. Uh, I mentioned to you all ago that more self-discipline the less social government. The more we discipline ourselves, the less government we need. Nothing will change unless you do something. You will have to have law when you don't have a dream. You need a dream. And you can't fulfill your dream without learning how to play hurt. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Wow. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Deferred means to be drawn out, to be delayed. Hope that didn't show up when you wanted it to, or not to hope, to be prolonged, to be removed. The Message Bible says, when I, when I put this out, my wife, she, she said, does that really say that in the message? I said, yeah, it does. It literally says, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn life around. Unrelenting disappointments leaves you heart sick. 32,000, 10,300. If Gideon did not have hope, this thing was going to shatter him. But he had hope in the God in whom he served. I want to say this to you, and this, and again, it's a harsh statement, but without hope, sorrow rules. If you don't have hope in your life, sorrow will own you. It will take you to the grave. So you've got to have hope in this life and the next life. Can I get an amen? Amen. So what happens when hope is deferred? Amen. It, 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 it's not a good thing. We lose it. The focus of our attention shifts from God to the situation. This shift in attention gave rise to a new set of thoughts and feelings. Judges 6, 11, the angel of the Lord came down. He, he sat under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, or the son, his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now, let, let me mention this to you. This, this happened, amen, before. This is the very first. This is that meeting in the beginning I was talking about, amen. But there's something when he said here, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor, you mighty man of war. The, the law, there's two laws here, a, a cognition. Cognition, the way you think, amen. Well, you are what you think. You are what you think. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And from the heart, the mouth speaks. If there's fear here, it comes out here. If there's, if there's uh, uh, faith here, it comes out here, amen. So this is very important. Hallelujah. So how you think? So that law's there. And second, the law of exposure. Your mind will think most about what it's exposed to. So in turn, when you read it, verse 15, uh, Gideon said, Lord, he said, Lord, uh, how can I save Israel 
My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least of my family. You ever said that to God? Lord, you forgot where I came from. You don't understand the mess. I came off Wheeler Mountain, back on Flatwoods Road, in a little uh, Jim Walter home. Amen. With no, no outhouse. I mean, had an outhouse there. You're going to take me from there and do what with me? Amen. And that's just my story. Your story is just similar to that. Even where God brought you from. Sometimes God don't even look at where you came from. He looks where you are right now. And he reminds you what your life is like with him in it. Yeah. Amen. With him in it, everything changes. You're a mighty man. A mighty man of valor. So don't forget the number one rule. What did God say? What did God say about you? Amen. What did he say for you? Hope got Gideon out of the hole he was in. Trust held him up. Fear would defeat him. Amen. And everything hinged on whether he was focused on the word. Hope. Everybody say hope. hope. You know, hope is why we got this church. Hope is why there's a church out in New Caney. Hope, hope is why people even hang out. It's hope. hope. Hope is such a part. We talked about it last week. Amen. So here it is in verse 21. And, and they stood every man in his place. So you got to imagine. The Midianites are down in the camp. It's like locusts down there, and Gideon puts them in all the way around those guys and gives every one of them a, a ceramic pot, and inside the pot was a light, and he gave every one of them a megaphone, a trumpet. Amen. you got to imagine the scene. And so down, the Scripture says, and all the host at that moment, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the hosts ran, and they shouted and put them to flight, and they blew the 300 trumpets, and Jehovah said, every man soared against his fellow. God did this quite a few times in the Old Testament. They ended up fighting each other, amen, against all the hosts, and the hosts fled as far as this place toward that place as far as the border. You know, I want to close with this thought here that all through Scripture I read, the, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. You know, when you're praying, I can't, I can't change the, the, the cancers, the diseases, the relational issues. And I can't do that. But I remind myself, Lord, the battle is yours. So I look at what this judge did, amen, and how he stood up there, and he ruled for, after that for several years. But 300 men, and I, I think of the spoils, the spoils that were down below, that after seven years, some of you fast for one day, you go without for one day, and you say, oh, man, that hamburger was good. Imagine seven years, seven years without Chick-fil-A, seven years without a pizza, seven years of having to go and, and gather up the scraps that remained. And beat them out just to make a little cake for your family. First year wasn't so bad. There was quite a bit left. Third year, I can still have. But seven years, he got tired of it. And God said, you know what? I got to find somebody that understands my heart. Uh, we, don't un we struggle with time. Forty years. Seven years. We struggle with time. A week sometimes. Th Pastor, we ain't had rain in three weeks. What are we going to do? Wait. Wait. Because it's coming. Amen. We're going to get through it. But when well, the gasoline's already hit five, six times, wait. Adjust. Deal with it. Lift the hose. Whatever it takes, we'll get through it. Amen. But the thing I won't do is not trust God. I'm going to trust God through all of this. I'm going to stay 300. Can you see that, Joseph? Amen. The musicians, I mean, it was like, it, that was a moment to me that musicians came alive. 300. And they blew the trumpets. Now, when I break this pot, the light goes off. I'm a target. I'm a target. A light that's on the hill, Jesus said, should never be hid. A light on the hill. And that's what you are, church. And I know sometimes it feels like, man, we were 32,000 at one time. We were, we were 10,000 at one time. Lord, look at us. We're just a small, we're a remnant in America now. You know, they keep saying statistically, there's not as many of us as it once was. Then light your light. Come on. Get on the hill. Blow your trumpet. Make a little noise. Stand up for God. 
Stand up for what's right. Watch what God does. Amen. Watch his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can survive the loss of an extraordinary number of things. We can go years with a lot of things that are lost. But there's one thing we cannot live without. That's hope. We got to have hope. We got to have hope for our kids, for our kids' kids. I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take the world for my kids, but I'd sure change the world for my kids. Amen. Do it for my grandkids. The capacity to stay focused on the presence and the power of God in our lives becomes supremely important. When we invite you to prayer, when you pray on Tuesdays, amen, whenever you pray, believe God. Believe Him for the best. Don't let sorrow overwhelm you and own you. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. I want to thank you first for our judges. Not just in the Supreme Court, but all over the United States. That there would be judges that would be put in for righteousness sake. Where the laws would change in such a way to expose the goodness of you. We love you. We thank you for this house. We thank you for the independence of America and the freedom to preach your word. Lift our hands and worship. Train up our kids the way we see fit. We thank you for your goodness. You're a good, good father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. We need to kind of hope that changes our mindset. It's, it changes things here. When I see Gideon, I see a very scared man. Amen. Fearful in the pit. But when I look through the book of Judges now, I see it a little bit different. How important each one. Do you know some, watch this. Some of them judges did nothing. They didn't rise up. They didn't change anything. They just served their turn. But every now and then, God will put a judge in that shifts everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you need to tie the offering envelope, it's in front of you. If you will give it online as our servant leaders who are coming up walk in front of you. If you wouldn't mind, amen, just holding up your phone, letting them know, hey, man, I'm, I'm giving online today. We thank all of you that are watching online. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. We appreciate those that watch. Amen. I know we have a larger contingency today watching online. And share this with other people. Let them know they can go to holywild.net. Amen. Or holywild.tv and check us out. Hallelujah. It's been another good week of camp. I don't know. What do we have? 130? 150. And we got another 150 coming this week. Amen. And uh, we got youth heading out of town, going to camp. So if any of you can, are able to come and work in the kitchen or help work on a ropes course Thursday morning and Friday morning, 9 o'clock, we'd love to have you come out. You don't have to get on the tower with me. Amen. We got all kind of places for you. Hallelujah. And have you work with us. But we do appreciate you. Don't forget Tuesday night. Would you welcome Pastor David as he comes? Come on, welcome him. <laughs> as we give today, we're believing God for jobs and less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprise, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. My daughter asked me this morning, Daddy, you know when...